Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we have some Truck Series Racing, Xfinity Series Racing, as well as the Cup Series at Pocono Raceway. Very excited for this weekend because I feel like this is kind of the last race weekend where we have one of those tracks that I'm not a huge fan of. I've never been a fan of Pocono, not a fan of watching it in real life, so it's just really about getting these races out of the way. And I kind of, when I was making the custom schedule, did that on purpose to put a lot of tracks I didn't like in the mid part of the schedule just to get them out of the way and not have to worry about dealing with them later in the year. Here we were though in the truck series where we had community member of Joseph Hook in the car for us or in the truck for us here today in Iowa and uh, we actually had a brand new Iowa setup in the truck for this race trying to just find some speed that we've never had at Iowa and sure enough Joseph was making it count with this brand new setup in the car he had worked his way into the top five before this race had come to a close here so he was up the inside there of Grant and Finger trying to make a pass on him and he was making good progress would climb all the way up into third place here down the back straightaway passing the 23 so a very very good performance hands down the best performance we've ever had in Iowa and we cut straight through to the final lap through turns three and four and it was a side-by-side -side battle with the 23 of Brett Moffat out of turns four but coming to the line Joseph Hook is going to get us a third place finish and continue this momentum that our truck series team currently has here with the best ever finish for us at Iowa Speedway so very very happy with that performance and effort by Joseph as you see the rest of the finishing order on your screen so uh we were moving into the xfinity series race now and i decided to try and do the same tactic put in a new setup with this car at iowa and see if maybe paul menard could find a little bit more success here in iowa because we've been on a hot streak lately with the truck team of going racing and the xfinity team with paul menard behind the wheel so uh there was high hopes coming into this race even though we've struggled so much here at iowa with our xfinity team in the past i was really hopeful that today we were going to find something here because based off that truck race it really built up the confidence leading into this race but unfortunately the car for Paul was really good on the short run but it was unbelievably loose even on the short run so that meant it was just going to get worse over time and that's exactly what happened you see Paul later in the race really really struggling he got sideways got into the wall almost goes down into the grass actually does go into the grass a little bit and loses a bunch of ground so he literally just tried to survive the rest of this race and managed to hang on to the car here as we came through out of turns four on this final lap and it was still a respectable Iowa finish for our team of P17 even though he was just hanging on for dear life the whole race. Of course, a little bit disappointing because I thought we were going to have a little bit more than that as Quinn Hauf, he picked up the victory here in the Xfinity Series. So he is locked now into the Xfinity Series playoff. So a great performance by him now is I think that's his third win in the Xfinity Series since he came into it a few seasons ago. Now, as we come through into the Cup Series race at Pocono Raceway, we got the Razor Flames back on the car for the Tricky Triangle. Uh, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of this track personally, but we come through to start our qualifying lap the goal was to hit a 53 uh, so hopefully we can at least qualify towards the top 10 if we hit our marks now we usually uh, can qualify pretty well up the field when it comes to Pocono and thank goodness we don't have to do this race back to back now here as we would got through turns one pretty well got through every turn pretty well but we hit a 53 just shy of the goal and qualified 12th place here for the Pocono Organics 325 now as we're going to look through the rest of the qualifying order on your screen up at the front of the field, we got our rival of Joey Logano joined by Harrison Burton on the front row. As usual, McLaren looking strong. Chase Elliott, the slowest of McLaren down there in 11th place now. So uh, a lot of interesting uh, thoughts on how they were in the last episode, how they were, for some reason, able to save a lot more fuel than just everybody else. So found that a little bit interesting now, something we're going to keep an eye on here throughout the rest of the regular season as you see Zane Smith all the way down in last place after a really good stretch of races lately for him. All right, boys, I mean, Texas didn't go uh, anywhere near what we were hoping it would, but I don't see why we can't bounce back here today, so let's go have a good one. There you hear myself on the radio. If you remember back to last episode at Texas, it was a disaster. We got penalized twice, uh, and the second penalty, I was below the speed limit. Someone mentioned it was because I pitted after the two-lap deadline to come into the pit lane before a stage closes, uh, but I've done that before and haven't been penalized for it, so I, I don't know if that was actually the reason or not, but I mean, nonetheless, nothing we could do about it in the end, and we still rallied to a half-decent finish and nearly. A top 10 now is a green flag. 
Lag is out, and we are underway from the Pocono Organics 325 here at Pocono Raceway alongside the number nine car of Chase Elliott, former teammate here at Gordon Hendrick Motorsports of ours. Elliott made, a, in my opinion, a, a great career decision to move over to this McLaren team as Joey Logano, Harrison Burton, and sail us down into turns one and not turns two because they consider this just one turn. Now, I, in my opinion, you could definitely count this as a six-turn track. Uh, I would like to hear you guys' opinion on that. Is this a three-turn track or is this a six-turn track? Now, is there actually three wide down this first back straightaway? Kyle Busch on our outside. A very interesting uh, position Joe Gibbs Racing is in, and the regulation changes doesn't really seem to be helping them very much. Kyle Busch is not in the top 16 in points this season. He is a little bit below the cut line. He's within striking distance for sure. He's definitely going to be in the mix right till the end of the regular season at Daytona. But now we're getting closer and closer to the end of that regular season already here in this final season of the career mode. And Joe Gibbs Racing as a whole needs to pick it up. Harrison Burton, he's been running fine. He would be well inside the playoffs without that win he already has. And right now he's looking strong up there. Uh, started P2 and up in the top five right now as they're to the back of Chase Elliott. Only five laps here in this first in opening stage so you don't have a lot of time to get stuff done stage two is over double the length of stage one i think it is 12 laps if i remember correctly now uh, as we're down this first back straight away behind bubba wallace bubba got his first win of the season last episode at uh texas i had mentioned last episode how good he's been at texas in the past and he really made a count there as i accidentally kind of take chase Elliott and bubba three wide right there out of turns three bubba gets clear so now we're just side by side with that napa auto parts nine at mclaren but he's actually able to use that draft to get back in front of us and clear now as Christopher Bell was just behind us in 10th place for that Roush LeBron racing team. So now with three laps to go in stage one, Bubba was moving his way forward, got past his teammate of Derek Krause there for 23-11 racing, and now I'm going to take the opportunity right here after a poor exit out of that tunnel turn for Derek to pass him, and then look up the inside of Chase Elliott as well, who had a bit of trouble, and now into turns three, we are going to take seventh place over here from that nine car. So now right behind Eric Jones in the McLaren, still up front, leading the way, Joey Logano, our rival now is I feel like we've never had a legitimately proper battle for a race win other than at Darlington, I think, last season with Joey Logano. Now as a caution comes out and end stage one early and you immediately saw when that caution came out. My car was so close to the back of Eric Jones, he had nowhere to go and I ran right into the back of him. That means our car is not going to take off in stage two. So that's going to be a bit of a progress wipe for us now as we are going to come into the pit lane. Joey Logano win stage one. We're going to take two cans of fuel, four fresh tires. No adjustments to the car because I felt like the car actually felt really good and I didn't want to mess with it too much. So uh, now we're going to get ready to go green from hopefully p7 now as it looks like daniel suarez our going racing driver ended up being the reasoning for the caution and that would be the end of the race for him and unfortunately we're going to be on the outside right in the way of everybody here and our car is not going to take off for the start of stage two but for the start of stage two nonetheless it is time to get amped in pocono
You saw it all right there in Amp from Pocono Raceway in stage two for the start. We did not take off because of that contact at the end of stage one when the caution came out. And then uh, I was really slow down the front straightaway. And then into turns one, I guess I just drove in too deep. And I just drove the car right into the outside wall in turns one. So uh, you really got to send it in there to hit the wall at this track. So that was just a mistake from myself. But we just focused on trying to move our way back forwards and just hit our marks and got into a rhythm once again here. And we got to the inside of the 17 Christopher Bell on now lap three and uh, we would move up into P13 right behind Todd Gilliland and I'd mentioned it already a couple times since those regulation changes that 38 team or 38 car with Gilliland behind the wheel for that front row Mercedes they have really found something now as we are side by side with Christopher Bell down this front straightaway but by the time we get towards turns one we would be able to get clear of that 17 car so I uh, hope to see that Roush LeBron racing team get into the playoffs with Bell behind the wheel but it's going to be very tough for them uh, now as we would look to the inside of Derek Krauss on lap four. You get to see how much better we are uh, than these guys, especially through the tunnel turn. It's just unbelievable the difference between my car and their car. We can just fire through that tunnel turn so much better on every aspect of that corner now as we come through out of turn three. Still side by side with Gilliland. Might have to side draft him a little bit now. How do you guys like that Budweiser paint scheme? I really do think that looks really cool. Latchion did a great job just as he always does with all the paint schemes he puts together for this career mode now. Uh, very thankful for the work he does for this uh, series and I'm hopeful we can continue to work together into NASCAR 21 as well when uh, modding is going to be a thing in that game of course so uh, hopefully that'll work out now as we were running P11 and you can see by the time we come through to lap 7 coming to lap 8 Harrison Burton had taken the lead but I have no chance of running these guys down in front of us so we're really just going to have to settle here for an 11th place finish in stage 2 that's really all I can do because without a draft especially there is no chance I'm going to run down the top 10 here before the second stage comes to a close so I just kind of settled in right here just accepted the fact I'm not going to get there I really wasn't pushing the car I just wanted to make it to the end of stage 2 at this point here is Harrison Burton though looking very very strong he started front row took the lead Logano really wasn't that fast but he has the track position that's what's keeping him up there in the mix today here from Pocono Raceway now as we go down towards turns one with just four laps to go here in this second stage but then the caution actually comes out just like it did towards the end of stage one and we are going to have an early end here now as Lewis Hamilton gets the final stage point Harrison Burton picks up a playoff point and we are all once again going to come into the pit lane and what I was concerned considering doing there before stage two came to a close uh, I was hoping it was going to stay green the whole time and then I was going to pit right at the end of stage two uh, and then stay out at the end of the stage and take the lead instead while everybody else came into the pit lane that plan of course got destroyed with the caution coming out unfortunately uh, as you see the rest of the running order currently Alex Bowman all the way down in p28 having a rough day Blaney having a rough day as well Briscoe a lap down uh, but he is still in the race and just got the lucky dog there for Penske as we gained two spots on the pit lane. Joey Logano was one of the drivers. I don't know what happened, but he lost a ton of positions. No longer even in the top 10. He's behind us here as we are back underway for the start of this third and final stage, which is a 15 lap stretch, which means we do have to make a green flag pit stop if it goes green to the end of this race. The first thing I was thinking of was that stage two idea I had because we do not have a car fast enough to win this race on just downright speed. So what I was considering doing was pitting a little bit earlier than everybody and then hoping we get an extremely lucky caution after we make our pit stop but before everybody outs comes into the pit lane so I can stay out and take the lead because I'm confident that uh, with track position being so important that I might not have the speed but I think I can defend well enough over everybody to hold on to the race lead if it's only for maybe three four even two laps if even that so uh, that was kind of the idea I came into stage three with here so that was kind of what I was expecting to do was pit uh, probably around lap 25 26 was the original plan but might even come a little bit later we'll have to wait and see now as you can see though at the end of lap one in stage three we're up into p6 we got some speed in this car and if we can just hold on to this track position we'll be doing really well now as we try to get to the back of the 23 of Bubba Wallace now as he's looking for his second win on the season so is the 19 of Harrison Burton and you got the 83 of Christian Eckes up there who's been very very strong won recently with Red Bull Racing at Darlington you also notice up there in the mix the Alpha Tori of Brandon Jones they have found something with these regulation changes they were a little bit off they were probably a, a car that was going to be right on that bubble area for the playoff grid throughout the rest of this regular season but with these new changes they found something and this could be really what they need to accelerate their performance to get themselves comfortably inside the playoffs and as well I'm noticing just downright today that Toyotas are very strong of course you look at the top five 
four Toyotas in the top five. So they are just overall very strong today. Now, as I was putting on the pressure to Bubba Wallace as we were approaching just 11 laps ago. Now, I'm trying to accelerate this pass on him. Trying to get this to complete as soon as possible to get myself as close to the lead as we can before we make our pit stop. So now we have this little scrap here with the 2311 car and driver of Bubba Wallace in that DoorDash number 23 Toyota Camry here. As we exit turns three, he is actually going to fight back down this front straightaway and just blow my doors off essentially now. So I would actually have to settle back in behind him and try again on the exit of the tunnel turn on lap 22 this is where we know we are so much stronger than everybody else and we prove that right here as we go down into the corner but this time we are actually going to get clear for the fifth position here over Bubba but now as we exit turn three he's going to get a way better exit than I do and we're going to actually have to give defensive over the 23 I do not want to be fighting him with 10 laps to go we're trying to get on with our day now so I force him all the way to the inside just trying to sign draft him as much as humanly possible here as we go down towards turns one but I still try to give him the space he needs to make turns one in a safe and comfortable manner but uh, unfortunately that also allows Bubba to actually get back clear of me so now we have to once again try and complete this pass on the 23 car so we look to the inside out of turns one and just continue this really good fight here with this DoorDash Toyota Camry now let's go down towards the tunnel turn Bubba putting on a great run here again in Pocono now as I just couldn't quite get the tunnel turn I needed that time with him on my outside so he stays clear for the time being now as we go down towards turn three so we're running out of time because of this fight with him but of course Bubba not doing anything wrong he has every right to fight us as hard as he can late in this race but uh, it was definitely frustrating just trying to find a way to pass him because he was doing an excellent job of just positioning his car in a position where I could not get away from him when I would get clear so finally right there out of the tunnel turn around 24 we get clear again but this time we had to pass complete before turns three uh, but now as it came through to the start of lap 25 down towards turns one he catches me way off guard and I missed the bottom into turns one so that allows him to fight back up the inside again so now we're gonna have another scrap with the 23 car now is thank goodness no one behind us is really putting on any pressure because we have been going at it for multiple laps once again I'm kind of pushing him down the track here to try and mess up his line into the tunnel turn but I still try to give him the space he needs into the corner to make sure he can actually comfortably get through it here as we once again fight up the inside here on the exit of the tunnel turn and we we will clear him again and this time I was hopeful that we had completed the pass finally but nope down towards turns one again on lap 26 he's able to fight up the inside there into the corner this time I take the corner a little bit differently try to pinch him down to that yellow line there on the apron doesn't quite work in my favor so I decided right here lap 26 instead of fighting with Bubba we're gonna pit this lap and hope that that caution comes out so on the exit of turns three sure enough into the pit lane we go and hopefully it works out in our favor the only way this strategy works to get us in a position to win is if a caution comes out after we pit and before everybody else pits so just feel only I took one can of feel I probably could have gotten away with half a can of feel but I wanted to be safe and just take one so it was 6.1 second pit stop for us now and now we just hope a caution comes out any moment now obviously we don't know what's going to happen we don't know if it's going to come out or not but we can only hope so on lap 28 heading down towards turns one I was thinking that these guys are probably getting ready to pit within the next lap or two here so I was really hoping that right there would happen the caution comes out and this is our golden opportunity we're going to stay out while everybody pits and we are going to come out and p1 for what is going to be an overtime restart here from the tricky triangle played that perfectly now I didn't think it was going to work there when we came through to start lap 28 I was like it's not looking good but now here we are leading the way for NASCAR overtime two laps to go we're looking for a win number four on this season now which would match the total amount of wins I think we had last season so it's been an incredible season nonetheless, but no matter what happens on this overtime restart, but the goal here is to be clear of Harrison Burton out of turns one and then just be defensive over him, over Christian Eckes and anybody that throws something at us now. And we are already clear before we even enter turns one over Harrison, but you can see right there a bit of a mistake already. I overshoot the uh, center of the corner a little bit, but thank goodness we are able to keep the car down enough to where we can be defensive over both of these guys behind us. So I'm just trying to cover two lanes at the same time. I'm just going back and forth to the wall to the inside a little bit 
and it was working pretty well here as we go down into the tunnel turn. Didn't hit that as well as I could have, but we still do a good job nearly into the outside wall, actually, on the exit of the tunnel turn. But thank goodness we do not make any contact. That would have probably be, uh, or been the end of our chances of winning that race if we would have slammed that wall. So through turn three, I go way too deep into the corner. That's going to allow the 83 of Ekus to get right to our back bumper here as we exit turn three, starting the final lap here in Pocono in position to steal a win. We don't have the speed to win, you can tell, because we are just constantly having to block these guys but if we can just keep them behind us I decided to give Harrison the line on the outside into turns one because I wasn't really expecting him to be able to do much with it and now the tire icon comes on the tire is wearing a lot faster than I anticipated we just barely get clear of the 19 now the 83 trying to look to the inside nearly caught me off guard but I was able to get down there and cover him off at the last moment as uh, I think another second if that went by I would not have been able to actually stay clear of him he would have gotten to our inside as we come through the tunnel turn for the final time we got through there pretty good but they're a lot closer than what I am comfortable with and we know we haven't been great through turns three here today and now they're within striking distance if I make a mistake or just go through turn three like I normally have been here but we get through here really really well through the center of the corner we push up on the exit that opens the door for the 83 to get to the bank bumper but it's not going to be enough he couldn't get to the inside for the fourth time this season we win in Pocono here at the Pocono Organics 325 absolutely awesome to pick up win number four on the season we'll have the burnout here in just a few moments but uh we kind of stole a win from either christian eckes or harrison burton of course but obviously we don't really care about stealing wins from people we want to get as many as we can especially in this final season of the NASCAR Heat 5 career mode before moving on to NASCAR 21 as you see the finishing order on your screen. Unfortunately, Larson, DNF, Suarez, DNF as well. Uh, so Hendrick engines all around, or Gordon Hendrick engines all around uh, DNFing here today as we do our burnout here and now for the fourth time. And uh, you never know in our NASCAR Heat 5 career mode which win, especially at this point being the final season, we don't know which win is going to be our last. So we got to burn it down as much as we can here uh, in Pocono now. It's, uh, it's nice to finally win at this track. I always felt like uh, it was disappointing that we haven't been able to find a way to win here because as much as I'm not a fan of racing here, uh, I always feel like we got speed that's capable of being a in winning competition. So we finally made it happen. Of course, we kind of uh, lucked into it, but I'll take it nonetheless as you look at the uh, point standings on your screen for the truck series there. Uh, in the next episode, we do have some more NASCAR Legend Series racing and then we have dover in the cup series a track that's actually uh quite a blast to drive at so i'm really looking forward to that one specifically now and can't wait to see what it's going to be like there and hopefully we can compete for our fifth win on the season now so four wins for myself and larson tied for the most you see kyle bush is 15 points below the cut line so is bowman briscoe is out by 14 Cindric and caruth both out by over 50 points so it's still quite close there on the bubble now as we have just 10 races to go in the regular season if you guys enjoyed you know what to do i'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this episode i really do appreciate it and of course want to say thank you to the going racing members of mj joseph 9001 timothy arline bubba jr brett derward dark gengar gaming aj Vasura, russell dixon kenneth barnett dana 9302 king matt xl speed demon 341 as well as illinois diecast i appreciate you guys support so much and i'll see you guys in the next one have a great day everybody